I was very interested in working with animals and natural history type questions. So like ecology and how like animals survive in the wild, like what do they eat, different like behaviors and stuff like that. And how does all of that work together to make an ecosystem? My parents were like super supportive of my desire to work with animals, but they didn't really know any options for me besides like being a vet or a zookeeper. And then they were like, you can't be a zookeeper because they don't make enough money and we need you to pay your bills and stuff like that. So for a very long time, I thought that I was going to be a vet until I got to college and I got introduced to my undergraduate mentor, Dr. George Mendorf, and he was someone who was working with lizards, a herpetologist. And that's when I kind of started to learn more about ecology and herpetology and got my first experiences there and started to decide, okay, this is probably more aligned with what I want to do. Yeah, Find That Lizard is kind of like a Where's Waldo, but with an actual lizard hidden in the photo. And I started it to show people that a Black woman could be a herpetologist and I wanted to engage them in the field work that I was doing. And so I realized that I couldn't actually bring people into the field with me. So I wanted a way of bringing the field to people. And so I started doing it on Twitter first and then Instagram. And I also posted it on Facebook and now it has moved over to my website. It is just a way that I could teach people about lizards and get them like really interested in, and because it's like a search and find game, it can really get at people's competitive nature. And then they're kind of just like, oh, this can't be that hard. And then when they don't immediately find the lizard, that's kind of like when I pull them in. And so you're getting this learning, but in a fun way. The Black womanhood is just always present and always there. And I've definitely throughout my career have experienced micro and macroaggressions around being a Black woman. And so as far as my diversity, equity, and inclusion work over my graduate career and then uh, now uh, as a professional has been you know, partially selfish of just not wanting to be the only one and seeing other people like me, but then also just realizing that with climate change and everything going on in our environment that impacts everyone and especially impacts Black, Indigenous, people of color, poor communities disproportionately. And so for me, it's about making sure that the people who are getting impacted are having some kind of voice and seat at the table when it comes to making decisions about our environment and our climate and things like that. That's essentially what drives me, is making sure that people have the opportunity to advocate for themselves and giving people the resources to get into these careers in order to do that. Having to do like DE and I work as a black woman or as a person of color, a lot of the times it's kind of expected that you're going to participate in those types of things. And so it kind of takes away from the work that you can do a little bit, just because it's like some of my peers, they just got to focus on doing the science that they wanted to do, whereas I am trying to essentially make things better for my community and other communities. And then it's just like, sometimes that goes unrecognized. There's always a, some kind of bias that is impacting every aspect of what you do, because what you do is based off of what you were raised off of your beliefs and your values and how you look at the world and things like that. Now I work for the Los Angeles Zoo with our paid internship program. Essentially what I do is mentor these undergraduate students through a research project in the summer, but then we also do uh, some professional development. And part of that is really just learning how to network. And so we practice science communication and, and things like that. Really, it's just about being open to meeting new people and then also being open to talk about the things that you want to do in life. And eventually you run into people with the resources to help you. Of course, you're always going to run into the haters, but when people see that you have a conviction and you're dedicated to something, then they're more likely to support you through it. And if they have resources to, to share those resources with you.